Hello everyone, and welcome back to Gloomhaven. Last time, I believe we came back with Diamond in hand, handing it back to Jaxera, but now we have been presented with a decision whether we should overthrow the military or kill Jaxera for what she has done. Of course, being the indecisive type, I think we might check out some of the other world quests before I decide which side of that coin I'm going to land on. But first, a city event. On a trip to the coin district, you catch sight of an old Riri Valrath carrying a large intricate vase out of his front door. As you get closer, the Valrath begins to struggle with the vase, sweat pouring from his brow. Under the strain, the Valrath loses his balance and the fragile vase topples downwards as he yells a, curse, a string of curses. Do we attempt to catch the vase or with no time to react to watch it fall to the ground? We're going to attempt to catch the vase. It's a comedy moment. You race forward and wrap your arms around the vase. You manage to keep the grip of it, preventing tragedy. The Valrath is relieved and offers to pay you for your trouble if you carry it the rest of the way. We get five collective gold. Well, we know how this goes. Brutus gets all the gold because he has a quest to buy all of the things. Now, we don't have any other leveling up to do, nor do we have any other perks to spend. So... With that in mind, we could do some shopping. That would be totally valid. Not that I would know what we would want to equip at the moment. Brutus doesn't have any hand items. When damaged by an attack, gain one shield for the attack. During your ranged attack, ignore all shield values. During your melee attack, add poison to a single target. During your melee attack, add stun to the entire attack action. I think that's our biggest boon. Given that uh, we could do something like trample and hit four things and have them all be stunned. We already have boots of striding. We can't... Oh, we've leveled up, so we can hold two small items as well. Unfortunately, we cannot afford a ring of skulls. But I think a warhammer for Brutus is going to be great. That's going to take up both his hands. And then we could afford a small item. Another minor healing potion, a minor power potion. During your attack, add one attack to the entire attack action. Again, could be good in our big AoE stuff. Or recover up to one card. During your turn, recover up to one of your discard cards. Let's take a power potion for those moments where it really does get to be really annoying when we keep drawing minus ones. As for Faith and her equipment... She's got helmet, body, hands, and legs all covered. Currently has no small items at all, so I guess we lost it in a story event or something. So we should definitely take advantage of this. We will take a stamina potion because she has a harder time maintaining her hand at only nine cards. Make sure it's equipped, of course. And in the other hand, let's go with a potion of healing. Right, so that's everything to do around here for now. I think we don't need to do any more shopping. Don't need to sell anything as we are at the moment. So now we have to decide what we're going to do today. Destroy the undead that the cultists discovered here. Kill all the enemies in all rooms. If you think you... If you think you deserve it, Harrow Hive, side quest. Kill all enemies in all rooms. Disrupt another cultist ritual nearby. Follow the Aster's directions on the place the coin describes. Objective, kill the colorless. Kill all enemies. Kill all enemies. Kill all revealed enemies. Reach the treasure room. Let's go check out this decaying crypt. The range of enemies seems to be fairly routine. We have to kill all the re revealed ones and reach the treasure room. 
Sounds like a good time, of course. An encounter on the road first. Not far outside Gloomhaven, you look up to see a large bird flying overhead. Something is odd, though. Its movements are jerky, and there is smoke billowing out of it. Then you see it plunge into a sudden nosedive and crash into the ground of the east. You rush to the scene and find a limping, soot-covered quatrill kicking a giant winged contraption made of leather and metal. Curse this wretched thing, he yells in frustration. I thought I'd worked it out. Then I suddenly lost pressure in the piston chamber. He looks over at you. You there. Wonderful timing. Help me get this back in the air. There's no time to waste. There's a, a double quotation mark there. Uh, yeah, sure. You set the wings and bang out a few dents while the Quattro repairs this precious problem. In under an hour, the Quattro declares the contraption airworthy and jumps in the cockpit. You stand clear and watch in awe as the thing begins flapping wildly, then sputters forward and lifts off the ground. Unfortunately, the flight is short-lived and the second crash is not nearly as forgiving. You find the Quattro dead on impact and there's nothing more to do except harvest the machine for valuable parts. Five more collective gold. Well, we try to be good people. What is life without a little bit of intrigue? The cultists have clearly marked this crypt as a spot of trouble for them. Perhaps clearing the place out will put you in their good graces. Or maybe you're just hoping to find a big stash of treasure, untouched by looters' hands. Well, yeah, big, big treasure. I want big treasure. Once you arrive, the smell makes you regret your decision more than anything else. It's not the fact you've had it up to here with exploring old decrepit ruins. It's not the undead horrors shambling and moaning in the shadows. It's the smell. The smell of death and soullessness and rotting flesh. All right. So we got to pick our battle goals and we might alter the things that we are equipped with. Loot five or more gold piles during this scenario. Allow none of your allies to become exhausted. We'll go with that since we have new potions to work with. Take only long rests during this scenario. Cause a trap to be sprung or disarmed on your turn or on one of your summons turns during the scenario. I'm probably more likely to do this if a trap is present. We probably want Thieves Neck. Disarm one adjacent trap. We'll need to get rid of something for that, though. This is always the hardest part. And it's an attack on bottom card, so we don't really want to give up too much of our movement for taking it. We'll probably do without hidden daggers this one. And then for Brutus, we probably want more stuff that attacks in a wider arc. We'll drop grab and go. We only need to reach the treasure room. We don't need to actually loot anything in there. And then sweeping blow, I think, given it hits three things and we have more things now that impact our entire attack action. Okay, let's take a look at the map around us. Okay, we've got a door and a long arc chamber and one behind, and another door and a long arc chamber behind. So, we want to get out of this room and to here as fast as possible. 
We need to reach the treasure room and we need to kill all revealed enemies. All mercenaries start with three curses. Well, that's not fun. Uh, difficult terrain costs two movement. Any sign of traps in this room? Doesn't look like it. So clearly we want to destroy the big stuff before it gets to us. Particularly with an attack of four. And we can stand in any of the revealed white tiles where we begin. The next four attacks targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies add two to their attack. Well, right now we've got these two guys not next to any of their allies, so we could go straight in with that. If we wanted to do something like throwing knives, it's attack two at a range of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So if we go throwing knives and single out, we can do some good damage there. Then for the brute... Attack 3, range 3, pull 2. We could pull the stronger guy to us with a hook and chain. And then if we have an attack on bottom, which we do with spare dagger, we could attack it twice. Let's give that a go. So spare dagger and hook and chain. This is bottom and top. All right, we're going fairly quickly. Scoundrels up first. We're going to get our four attacks bonus going. Then we're going to attack each of these two that are on their own currently. During your ranged attack, ignore all shield values for the entire attack action. Uh, but then we lose it forever, so I'm going to not do that yet. Excellent. Adequate. Don't need to heal. Don't need to get any of that stuff back yet. We'll take two damage there. Right. Brute's turn. So I think we're going to stick with the plan. So this is three and this is two. We'll worry about thinking about using our eagle eye goggles after we see how good the first attack is. That was great. Well, then we can spend our other attack action doing this. Uh, during your melee attack, add stun to the entire attack action. Don't need to worry about that for a single enemy, I think. Nor do we want to add one to this particular attack as well. So just a basic attack on this one. Now the skeletons have already gone, so it's going to be this guy who's only moving one this turn. So he's not going to get an attack against us, I believe. Excellent. Love it when a plan comes together. Right, we have... Sweeping Blow, which could currently hit all three of them. And in doing something like that, we could add Stun against three targets, or we could add one Attack against three targets. We would just need to move one, two, three to get there. And this is a top attack action. So we have plenty of stuff. I say we have plenty of stuff. We have Fatal Advance that will let us move four. And then Sweeping Blow attack them all. And over here... Uh, 
Attack three, add two attack and gain one experience when the target is adjacent to any of your allies. Well, we would then attack this skeleton here for five. And so well, we also have single outgoing, although this skeleton is not on their own. So if we were going to do that, maybe we don't need to use sweeping blow so specifically. We're going to flanking strike here. That will do five against four, which should kill it. Then we could thieves knack the other skeleton next to us. Seems to be a good choice. So attack on top, attack on bottom. So we're going to try and kill this guy with faith on a four. So no matter what we do, we're going to be going after. We could provoking roar any enemy who targets one of your allies this attack targets you instead and that's a bottom and we could eye for an eye retaliate for two on top as well I think we can do that so this is bottom this is top And we're up first, which is good, because we want to set these things up accordingly. So you're getting attacked for five and hoping you die. Love it. Then you are getting attacked for three. Also love it. Now here we are going to Provoking Roar. And retaliate. And that's our turn. Uh, we will use our hide armor to make that half. They take two in retaliation. Then he attacks us regardless of his distance from us because he was going to attack Faith instead. We will reduce that down as well. No retaliate on that one, though, because they weren't next to us, which is a bit of a pain, but sure. Now, this is an elite enemy. Living Corpse elite, so we cannot just do our super mega instant kill, which is fine. We could attack and push them away into the difficult terrain. That might keep us safe on a future turn, and we'd be able to stand on this six gold while we do it. So if that's attack three, push two on top. We just want a... Oh, we could do move three, push one on bottom. And then skewer on top. That would probably have just as much efficacy on what we want to do. Then here we're attacking something that's on its own. So we're going to get more attack power when we do it. We could attack and add poison. We could move and add poison. And if we do that, we want to go before. Special mixture goes on 33. I'm going to assume that the poison doesn't stack. But that will be fine. Hopefully they go slow. They go fast. Move to immobilize and muddle target one adjacent enemy. Or at least they're not attacking us. So Faith is immobilized, cannot perform any move abilities, and muddled. A muddled character gains disadvantage on all of its attacks 
the muddle condition is removed at the end of the character's next turn. Well, we can skip the movement, but still poison them. And then with them being poisoned, we can attack them. And even at disadvantage, we do six damage, which is lush. And then the brute here, our plan is to move three and push one. And then attack three. Don't think we need to stun. Uh, so we're going to attack for four because of the poison. If we rolled at advantage, we need a plus three. If we used our minor power potion, we would need a plus two. Let's just go with a basic attack right now. Let's not overcomplicate things when we haven't even seen the other two rooms yet. That is a cursed miss, which is a great shame. We pick up the six gold we're stood on, which is nice. Now we get to go again. We should think about trying to get to one of these doors soon, as soon as we killed this guy. We do not have a ranged attack as Brute. So we'd have to step in to attack. Faith still has Swift Bow, which attacks for three plus two. On your next four attacks targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies, add two to the attack. So that'll be five. Or we could pull them at a range of three. That's a bottom. Swift Bow is a top, so that will make it so that here we can attack with Warding Strength and then move with Fatal Advance. They are drawn with us, so we get to go first. Faith is, of course, faster. So we're going to start with the ranged attack, because if they moved closer to us, then we made the ranged attack we would have disadvantage on that attack. Well, that's going to do everything that we needed it to. Now we have to decide which way around we're going to go. This side had the skeleton. This side had the bloated zombie. They both have the same symbol over the door, so that's just aesthetics. I guess we're closer to this door between the two of us. This is the side we're going to go. Faith is just going to do a standard move to action. And we will end her turn. Now we... I guess we're just going to take our move four. One, two, three. I'm not going to activate the boots yet. I have trample to utilize for those. In this room, we have a trap, four damage and poison. We have two of these guys that are attacking for six and pushing for one, but they're not in our range yet. And these guys are moving for three and cursing all t enemies within range. They only have two HP, which is really good, especially because Faith still has her piercing bow. So we're going to move one more into this room. And we cannot attack and push. Unfortunately, if I'd have thought about it sooner, we could have moved to here and possibly pushed them back into that trap. But so be it. We will just miss out on this attack action and end our turn. These guys are taking generic damage just for existing because they are old and decayed and decrepit. 
And these guys, they do have flight, so they're not impacted by the traps that they stand near. But what I do recall is that we can push enemies through traps onto other traps. So we have attack with pierce and retaliate. And Faith currently just has her flintlock, so we're probably looking at at least one rest for Faith. Short rest for that. Venom Shiv. I mean, I would like to move for five right now. One, two, three, four, five. No, we'll burn it. So do we have a push? No. We have other move fives. We have pull. We do not have push. That's fine. So Faith wants to move one, two, three, four, five if she's to get an attack in this turn. Or of course we could move enough to then swift bow or similar. And we have trample, move four with jump, attack for two, targeting all enemies moved through. Well, we could move six with our boots, and we could move one, two, three, four, five, six. So we could attack all of them, and we could do so at advantage, and we could add stun to the entire attack action. Now, none of these are immune to stun, so our other attack is just going to be a standard attack 2 on top, I think, rather than a wall of doom. Faith already short rested, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Swift bow is attack 3 at a range of 4. Throwing knives attacks two at a range of three. One, two, three. So we would need a one, two, three move on bottom to use throwing knives against two enemies. One, two, three, one, two, three, yep. Yeah. Let's go with that. We are fastest, always nice. So we're moving three up to here. We are skipping our poison ability. Then attacking two at a range of three on these guys. No shield to pierce through. Good for damage. And a curse. Or just a miss, one of the two. End the scoundrel's turn. Now, for us here, we are going to trample. We're going to add extra movement to that. And we are going to move one, two, three, four. Do you want to move through the one that's on the trap or not? It's probably not going to make too much of a difference. And we will get ourselves to here. Is that where I want to be? We can't push these guys into the trap, so that doesn't matter. So that's where we're going to be. And then during your melee attack, add stun to the entire action. Or during your attack, gain advantage on the entire action. Or gain one. Can we use multiple things in one attack action is my next question. We absolutely can, so we could just kind of haymaker these guys with everything. But we are going to get another attack action if they're stunned. So we'll save the power potion, but I will take advantage on three attacks. Uh, 
I would say that went pretty well. Don't need to heal ourselves. Now, with this, we are going to simply attack for two with a basic attack action. We aren't going to get through this shield, but we may draw a plus one or a times two, so it's worth just trying. No, nope, they are immune to our assaults. We are both getting attacked, unfortunately. The corpses didn't do anything as they weren't within range of us, which is great. Now, Brutus is going to need to short rest. Could long rest, but I don't fancy it right now. Wall of Doom. I kind of want that for the next room in case it's full of terrible, terrible things. Fatal Advance will have to lose it. And Faith just recently redrew her hand, so that's fine. We can now attack the guy with the shield from here. And during all your ranged attack, ignore shield values for the entire attack action. So we have Swift Bow. We can get through that shield without too much issue, I imagine. So if that is a move, uh, a top attack three, we need something on bottom. We could move five. One, two, three, four, five. We're not going to get through this trap, unfortunately. But we do still have Thieves' Knack. So, in fact, we could go one, two, three, four, five. Might be putting ourselves in danger, but we would have Thieves' Knack there to disarm a trap afterwards if we wish to. That said, Smoke Bomb could pull one of them onto that tile, perhaps. Smoke Bomb is a bottom pull two. We don't have a top move. So we're going to Flanking Strike move for five. Swift Bow. Attack the one with shield. And then over here. We might want to move on to that gold. We still have Skewer, which would attack both of these guys. That would be nice. We would need to move one to get there. Can you push laterally? I'm going to guess not. I'm going to guess that's a pull action. But there's only one way to learn. Learn by doing. So we want to skewer and sweeping blow. Right, so nicely, Faith is up first and she gets to attack the guy with the shield. That way they don't even get an attack in this coming action, which is wonderful. And then we're going to move five up to here. And we will take this opportunity to heal ourselves. And end our turn. Now here we want to move three. Skip the rest of our movement. Now, if I confirm target here, am I going to push him out of the way of the skewer attack? Yes, but we can skip the push, which I'm going to. Now we're going to attack both of these guys. And sure, I will add a minor power potion to this on the off chance that we can draw a plus one somewhere, or a times two, or something similar.
totally worth it. We killed the closer one. We'll also take our healing potion. And end our turn. We pick up the gold we are stood on. So we would have received double the four, but our helmet prevents crits on us. We'll just take that damage. Now we just need to do four damage to this guy. We still have hook and chain. Attack three, range three, pull two. And I think we could pull them one, two onto this tile. So if we find something, we don't have any other big movements left. So instead we'll do provoking raw for a standard move two and hook and chain for top attack three, pull two at a range of three. Bottom move two, that's good. And then here we could Thieves Knack. That would cause a trap to be sprung or disarmed on your turn or the turn of one of your summons during this scenario. But it would mean that we might not get a chance to kill this guy. However, we do have Spare Dagger. So Spare Dagger is a bottom attack two. Hook and Chain is a top attack three. So we can Hook and Chain him closer to us, then attack with the Spare Dagger. That leaves Faith available to... Disarm one adjacent trap. And then probably just move two. So this is top to disarm a trap, bottom move two. They're going slowly, which is always great to see. So disarm this, get two experience. Move two, put ourselves over here. Then we are going to hook and chain this guy. And that kills him, so we don't even need to worry about the second half of the action. And if I had a loot card, I would consider trying to get all that gold, but I don't right now, so I'm just going to keep pushing on. Now, our other goal is just reach the treasure room, but I assume it's not just going to be, you're in the room, the turn ends, you're successful. I assume there's going to be some other component to this, but I have been wrong before. Right, we do have Provoking Raw Retaliate combo available, although we would need to move to get that going, so... We don't have any top card movements. So it looks like we're going to move two. We'll do that with warding strength. And then if we want to, we can wall of doom for anything that tries to immediately come and attack us. Otherwise, ah, we could retaliate. Now we'll do Wall of Doom because Wall of Doom offers us the opportunity to have shield in case there's ranged attacks. Now Faith needs another short rest because we can't use this now, can we? We have to do it on our turn, sure. Throwing knives. I would quite like it, especially the loot too, in case we need to do something in this treasure room. Heal three and move burn, that's fine. So now we need to move. Flanking strike will move us one, two, three, four, five into the doorway. We also have our boots that we haven't used yet. We could smoke bomb, be invisible when we get there, then move five and move further into the room with our boots of striding. Then afterwards we can flintlock or swift bow accordingly. I don't need to use the boots immediately, do I? I can use those when we get there. Although we definitely don't want to stand in the door because we'll be in Brutus's way, so we'll just activate it. 
Uh, kill all revealed enemies. Okay, so we need to kill these guys. What is this? Living Sprite Elite. I wish I hadn't used my piercing bow, but sure. We also have three gold all the way around and a treasure chest up here in the center. So we are going to move with our extra movement over onto this gold. And let's recover an ability because we might as well do it now. Uh, maybe that was not the best use of that. Right, this guy is moving. They're trying to get to the brute. But they're not going to attack yet. And this guy's going to move four, attack three at a range of four. One, two, three, four. So he's almost certainly going to have the opportunity to attack us with a ranged attack. So retaliate is not going to do anything. Shield will. So to that regard, I think I'm going to put up my warding strength instead. For the flurry of attacks to come. And do I still want to Wall of Doom? No, we should do it when we move when we go slowly on the initiative. So we'll just take the attack action, skip the attack, end our turn. Living spirit goes, moves four, attacks us through the doorway. We can reduce that damage. Now we're up. And Faith, do you still have two throwing weapons? Because if you do we can definitely attack two things while invisible and get double the benefit out of it for our double damage. So that's throwing knives top. Then what we want to be doing is stood here and loot two, which is our loot two card. Throwing knives, okay. Well, we can short rest and get it back. So that's top. We may as well flint lock on bottom. Try and take out something while we're at it. And for here, provoking raw or an eye for an eye. Or we can short rest again. We could heal for two, but then we wouldn't be able to attack. We can still get back Spare Dagger or Skewer. Or Sweeping Blow if we had a move three, but it is a move three. Or Hook and Chain. Move four. If the movement was in a straight line, perform Attack X, where X is the number of hexes you moved through. Well, we can move one, two, three up to here. Does it have to? No, because it can be any number. So we're going to short rest. We don't want to lose hook and chain. We will lose spare dagger. Then if we're hook and chaining, that's bottom. That's move four with an attack. So then we will Wall of Doom as well and hope we're near the start of the initiative. We are near the start of the initiative. Scoundrel is going to attack two at a target of two. Um, do we go after... Or we could just attack the guy with all the shield in the world with our super giant mega double attack. Seems kind of overkill. But at the same time, getting through three shield 
any other time is going to be a real pain in the neck. So let's do that. And we missed because of our curse, which is freaking horrible. We do still have a plus two and a times two. That's another curse. That's a minus one. That was the best turn ever. Uh, we are going to move one, two, three. Can't move into this tile because it's four. Skip the last of our movement. Then confirm the attack. We can't even get through this guy's three. Uh, we still have a plus two and a times two and an add a target. But let's attack the thing we can definitely hit. That's good. And then we will retaliate and shield ourselves. If the thing with shield... Oh, it's just going to curse us. Lovely. I guess we're not going to get to retaliate against... Curse. They take one, which is nice. They take another one. They don't even attack us on this turn. Right, we still have Skewer. We don't have any wind to pierce with. We have ice element waning. Still haven't explained that because it still hasn't become particularly pertinent. But some things you will do a skill and create an element. And then other skills can consume that element for beneficial effects. Like this could consume air element to cause plus one attack with piercing one. Right, whilst we're here then, let's... Provoking Roar on bottom. Eye for an eye on top. And we're going to... We can move into this for two, and then flanking strike. Doesn't seem ideal, but it's the only way we're going to be able to hit at all hard enough to kill this thing in any capacity. So... We need a bottom move and a flanking strike. It's going to be these. No, it's not. It's going to be Thieves' Knack because we can default move with the thieves knack and then still have our swift bow they're still going slowly scoundrel base move two into rough terrain attack this guy and hope for a plus one please please plus one. Oh, i'm so happy end the scoundrel's turn then we are going to Retaliate and provoking raw. Force any more attacks onto us this coming turn. Move one, attack four. That's rough. They get retaliation damage. And this guy is going to do the same. Uh, we would die if we take this, so we need to burn one available card. It's going to be Skewer, because Sweeping Blow can still hit them both. Now, we are going to need to short rest to play something. That's fine. So we are Sweeping Blow on top. And we could hook and chain for movement and another attack as well. Although it wouldn't be in a straight line. 
Although we could sweeping blow hitting them both first. Then just move one and attack for one. It's something. Or attack for two and disarm would stop one of them hitting us. Whereas what is Faith doing right now? We have Swift Bow still. And I really want to loot two. But we could save the loot two until after something else dies and loot what it drops. I just definitely want the chest. Because chests are hard to come by. Well, Faith has to short rest. She doesn't get a choice about that because she only has one card in hand. Throwing knives is not the one I want to get rid of. This is fine. And then we are going to... Step back with flanking... Uh, oh, flanking strike. We could hit this guy. But if we kill them both this turn, we won't get an opportunity to loot. So we are going to... Flanking strike to move away. Swift bow to hit them. And have throwing knives to loot with next turn. And here we are going to... What are we going to do? I don't think pushing helps us. This isn't a trap behind them. We can attack them all for two. We can attack them for two, and then on bottom, we could move for one and attack for one. Seems to be the best option we're going to get. And we want to do that fast. Right, so. Faith. Move to here. Skip the rest of the movement. Attack this guy. That's rough. Five damage becomes four. We get pushed one. And they died from just their own suffering, which is actually really good. Uh, right. Oddly enough, we don't want to kill them this turn. We'd like to harm them, but we don't want to kill them. So let's move one. Skip the rest of our movement. Or we can move two. No, we're going to move. If, if you go back and forth, does it still count as a straight line? We're going to move to here. Attack for one. Even if we double it, we'll still be okay. Uh, now we can attack for two. And I'm just kind of hoping we don't get a plus one. Alright, this is ideal. Faith does a short rest. We get the other card that isn't Swift Bow. We get rid of Flanking Strike. Then we play Throwing Knives to loot two and Swift Bow to attack. And over here, we need to short rest once. We will burn Sweeping Blow, that is fine. And then we are just going to play Provoking Raw Hook and Chain, but we want to do it more slowly than Faith. So Faith is up first. Our first thing to do is loot two. We're going to loot all of the tiles within two tiles of us. 
we get the chest. Second skin. Interesting. And we get 12 gold. And then we are going to attack from range. They die. Now, Brutus still gets his turn. So that means we get an opportunity to move onto this pile of gold, which has six gold on it. And then when we end on that six gold, we will pick it up. And we are successful. After the terrible shrieks and moans of the undead, the sound of someone clapping is at once foreign and alarming. Turning around, you see a hooded figure standing at the edge of your torchlight. Creepy. You raise your weapon, but the grin on his silhouetted face isn't menacing in a way that calls for arms. It is menacing in a way you've never experienced before. Well done, sirs, the figure lilts. My, my, but you do have a way about you, don't you? And you've certainly gotten our attention now. Removing this troublesome crypt of its rogue undead element. We very much prefer our undead to be the controllable variety now, don't we? There is a long pause as the figure stares at you, still grinning. Well, perhaps you'd be so kind as to do us another favor. After which, we'll be mostly settled on the whole issue of you murdering some of my brethren. He there is a necromancer in Gloomhaven. Been giving us a spot of trouble, sending mercenaries out to do her dirty work against us. Maybe you've met her. Maybe I have. Kill Jaxera. Bring her head to our headquarters, and we'll see about letting you live. Well, that is quite the predicament we found ourselves in. Right. Well, we get one perk point thanks to allowing none of our allies to become exhausted during the scenario. And we managed to neutralize a trap or disarm one on our turn. So now we can head back to the city. Of course, we do not do a travel event while traveling back to Gloomhaven. We get five gold each and eight XP on top of the other gold and XP that we looted. And now we have lots of leveling up and shopping and all other kinds of things to do, but we will do that at the start of next session. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.